My name's Jeff Regan. I'm the lion's eye, his private eye. Gumshoe, peeper, Seamus, whatever you want to call it. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, International Detective Bureau. He's a guy who likes to make money. But when he makes money, I get into trouble. Here's the kind of adventure you've been waiting to hear. Hard-boiled action and mystery as told by Jeff Regan, investigator. So stand by for trouble. Stand by for suspense. Stand by for adventure. In tonight's story, The Lonesome Lady. And now, here's Jack Webb as Jeff Regan. Well, this is the way it started. Everything was routine. Melody was at her typewriter working on the usual sheet of paper backed by the usual four carbons, routine. The smell of the lion's 50-cent cigar hung in the room, routine. And the air conditioning was out of order, all routine. I looked over Melody's shoulder and read the memo. Attention, International Detective Bureau, Anthony J. Lyon, from the American Insurance Company Claims Division. Here you are. Keep the original for yourself and give the others to Mr. Lyon. I guess you're going to be on this. On what? You beautiful thing, you. Huh? <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, don't. Jeff, don't do this. Somebody might vote here. Mr. Lyon will tell you all about it. What's the matter? New boyfriend, huh? <laughs> Not Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Lyon's waiting for you. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Regan. Ever hear of a guy named John Arenzo? Nope. A doctor named Maurice Wade? Nope. A French dame named Marie Rochelle Portier? Nope. Should I? Maybe. I don't know yet. It's all routine stuff on that American insurance company contract. They want us to do a little work for them. Their claim man came in about an hour ago all excited about Renzo. He kicked off early this morning. I can't very well meet him. There's a time and a place for wisecracks, and this isn't it. It figures. Lorenzo kicks off, and the American Insurance Company's going to have to kick in with $35,000 to his beneficiary. And that's Marie Rochelle Portier. No relation. Girlfriend, I guess. It's almost a bank buster for AIC. So, you want me to see her? No! It'd be ticklish if it turns out to be legitimate. Now, you better look at the other angles before you see her. If AIC has to pay off to that dame, we might just as well say goodbye to their business. We can't stand much treatment like that. Well, you mean you want me to find a way for them to get out of it? I didn't say that! If it's legitimate, they'll pay. That's nice. What I want you to find out is how a guy carrying $35,000 worth of life insurance winds up croaked in a hotel on Main Street with two dimes and three pennies sitting on the dresser. It could happen. Sure, it could happen. But you find out why it could happen. Renzo's worth 23 cents alive and $35,000 dead. And the county's going to have to plant him. The insurance company doesn't like it, and I don't like it. How'd he die? Well, the coroner says it was a hard job. Insurance company? Insurance office says Renzo applied for the policy three weeks ago. It was approved ten days ago, and he kicks out today. Everything's fine. On paper. So what am I supposed to do? Find out what isn't fine about what that physical Renzo passed. Now, you can start with the insurance doctor, name him Maurice Wade. And get on him first. And call me if you run into any trouble. The place I was looking for turned out to be a brand new three-story building on Wilshire Boulevard. In the hall, I could still smell wet plaster and cement. There was one name on the neon-lighted directory, Dr. Maurice Wade, internal medicine, diagnosis, and the numbers 310. The sign on the self-service elevator said, do not use, so I climbed the three flights of marble stairs. The first door at the top was 310. Enter. I enter. A blonde girl in a white uniform sitting at a small desk smiled up at me through Sharp white teeth showed me one well-shaped leg and two well-manicured hands, all routine stuff. How do you do? Have you an appointment? No, I don't. I was hoping I could see Dr. Wade without an appointment. Well, that's almost impossible. He's so busy these days. I'm Miss Porter, his nurse. Perhaps I can help you. Well, 
My name's Regan, but I'm afraid I'll have to see him. Oh? Oh, if you don't mind, I'll just stick around and wait for him. Oh, he isn't in just now, and I was just about to go to lunch, Mr. Regan. Well, that's fine. We'll go together. Dr. Wade will be in at 2 o'clock. You can come back then. I get it. 2 o'clock. It was right then that my day began to change. I stepped outside the office door and walked over to the brand new stairway of that brand new building. Now get this. I stopped a minute because I thought I heard somebody opening the doctor's door. I turned around to take a look when I felt something brush my arm. The stairway suddenly turned upside down and began to walk up me. There was a lot of noise all around and I was trying to yell for somebody to shut it off. It got louder and louder and louder. It was then I decided this wasn't routine. Thanks for helping me tote him upstairs. He'll be all right now. I'll take care of him. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. I was lying on a leather couch in a white room. A tall, thin man with a hooked nose seemed to be running things. He was waving an arm at a vague crowd of people near the door. Then somebody I couldn't see shoved a bottle under my nose. Give him a whiff of that. There you are. I think he'll be all right now. Now then. Can you hear me, mister? Oh, don't try to move yet. Nothing broken, but you had quite a tumble for yourself, my friend. Quite a tumble. You might have been killed. That's what I was thinking. Somebody shoved me. What's that? I was shoved. (laughs) That's crazy. I was on the second landing when you come falling down. Wasn't anyone around? Why did anyone want to shove a man down a flight of stairs? I don't know. You're just plum bruised and battered, mister. When you get to thinking about it, you just got dizzy from the heat or something. How didn't you? Maybe. I should. Mary, hand me that like a good girl. Here you are. Here. Try a little of this. (coughs) Thanks. That help? Yeah. Have another. You want me to call you a taxi, Mr. Regan? No, thanks. I got a car out in front. Well, better you rest up a minute or two longer, friend. My name's Wade, Dr. Wade. This is my office. Wade, you're the man I came to see. Well, I don't believe I know you. You one of my patients? Oh, this is Mr. Regan, doctor. I explained that you took patients only on appointments. Mm-hmm. Well, as long as you're here, Mr. Regan, what can I do for you? Well, I'm not a patient. I been retained by the American Insurance Company to investigate a claim concerning a former patient of yours, a man named Arenzo. A private investigator. We're checking on a policy that was issued on him. You were the examining doctor. You don't represent the district attorney's office or anything like that? No, I don't. I'm with the International Detective Bureau. And you don't have a warrant that says I have to show you my files? No, I don't. But I thought that as long as you were employed by the insurance company and you conducted the examination that you well, let give me... give me back my bottle, mister. And then you can get on out of my office. And get out fast. If I'd have known you was something like that, I wouldn't have drug you up here in the first place. Now get on out of here before I throw you out. Well, you can see how things stood between Dr. Maurice Wade and me. I walked out of the place with as much dignity as I had left. I had other plans. There were other files to look at and other people in the city I could talk to. Detective Sergeant Salvatore Wendetti, morgue detail was sitting in his office, chewing on a cold cigar, reading a traffic bureau memorandum on the new liability laws. Well, 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 if it isn't Jeffy the Regan. How are you, Jeff? Boy, I haven't seen you in a long time. Pull up a chair. What happened? I fell down a flight of stairs. Mm, you ought to be more careful. Lots of people get killed doing things like that, so what can I do for you? Sally, I want you to find out about a man named John R. Renzo for me. Huh? He died this morning, and your office is handling it. Renzo, 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 John Renzo. Johnny Renzo. Yeah, sure, we got him in the icebox now. I want to see him handle it myself. No, no, thanks. I know he's dead. What else? Well, never really a bad actor. Never really a good one, either. Mind you, all the boys in the beat knew him. Why? Come on, tell me some more. Well, he made Lincoln Heights jail about nine months out of 12 on a vag rap, one thing or another, routine. Vagrancy? Just one of our lazier citizens, so he's dead now, so what's to it? He was insured for $35,000. Oh. <whistles> yep, that's what I'm thinking. So somebody's mighty glad to see little Johnny dead. Who gets it? Her name's Marie Rochelle Portier. No relation. 
About time in the old town tonight for her. Mm -mm. Tomorrow night. The insurance company has 24 hours to investigate. Ah, that's what you're doing. All right, Regan, what else? Well, you got the coroner's report? Oh, sure. sure. Right here, came in an hour ago. It was a heart job. You sure? Positive. No one deader than Johnny Renzo. It was bound to happen the way it did sooner or later. Was he an old man? Forty-five, fifty, maybe. You can never tell on that kind, but all of us around here knew it. Knew what? That his ticker's been bad for years. Every time he made the heights, it'd give him a soft job. Couldn't take a chance. Hey, look, Sally, are you telling me it was chronic heart condition? I'm telling you it was a chronic heart condition. Well? Mm -hmm. I need that telephone. Uh, uh, not this one. Only inside call. Try, try the one across the street. <laughs> Hello. This is me. I ran into some trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, you, you'll have to get me a warrant or something so I can get in that doctor's office. What? He wouldn't play ball. He threw me off. Now, the coroner's report shows that Renzo has a chronic heart condition. Then he never should have passed a physical. I thought that'd get through to you. But we'll have to find out what's in that doctor's office before we can do anything about it. Now, look. Get a hold of one of those double-breasted lawyers and rig up a thing, will you? Hey, Melody, get my lawyer on the phone. They may take the rest of the day to get you in there legal, and we haven't got the time. So get busy. I just told you I can't get in. If I can't get in, I... Can't get in. I hung up the phone and stepped out of the booth and crawled into my car. I was sitting there fumbling with the keys, wondering how I was going to get to those files when somebody else figured it out for me. He was a big man in a brown sport coat. Take it easy, Pilgrim. I just want to talk to you a minute. Well, that's tough, Pilgrim, because I don't want to talk to you. I've had a busy day and I... Wait, oh! I wouldn't try anything like that, Pilgrim. I just got here. Ain't no lots of holes. Come on, this one's just basic. I can tear your arm right off if I have to. You... Wise up, Seamus. I'm here on business. Yeah? What kind of business? You just been in to see one, Daddy? Sure, I've been in to see him. He's a friend of mine. Why the muscle act? Just to make sure you don't start hollowing your brains out or something. I'll let go. Okay, so what did he say? Ooh. What did he say about what? You know what. Renzo. Well, the county's going to bury him. More, Seamus. <laughs> Keep talking. Only makes sense. He's dead. For good. Oh. More. He died of a heart attack this morning. Somebody gets 35,000 bucks because of it. And you've been seeing people at Dr. Wendetti. Uh, day next on your list? Maybe. Oh, is that what you want to know? Yeah. You're a good boy, Regan. Now, here's what you want to know. You forget everything you know about anything. You don't say a word to nobody. No one. Understand? No one. Not even your own mother. Just forget it. <laughs> right. Now, remember... Not a word to anybody. Or else. I wonder if you'd do as good without a gun. Oh. I'll see you later, Pilgrim. Sure you will. Sure you will. But in case we miss connections, and so as you won't forget me, here's something to remember me by. So long, Pilgrim. return to Jeff Regan, investigator, in just a moment. The Army Nurse Corps Reserve still has commissions available. If you're a graduate registered nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, you may be eligible for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps section of the regular officer's reserve. Those who meet the high standards and qualify to serve with this fine organization may elect active or inactive status. Nurses requesting inactive status will continue with civilian nursing, but stand ready to serve in time of emergency. In addition, they have the opportunity to take advantage of special training courses. Nurses who request active status enjoy the same pay and privileges as all other officers. Graduate work is provided at the Army's most modern teaching centers, and the nurses obtain educational experiences that benefit them in both civilian and military nursing. 
Now, if you believe you qualify for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve, apply to the Adjutant General, Washington 25, D.C. That's the Adjutant General, Washington 25, D.C. And now, back to the story of the Lonesome Lady and Jeff Regan, investigator. This wasn't routine either. It was brass knuckles, a big man in a brown sport coat in the front seat of my car. I guess I fell onto the horn into my steering wheel. I couldn't seem to sit up straight and get away from the noise. Hey, don't you like peace and quiet? Hey, come on, sit up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what happened to you? I don't know exactly. I don't know. Gee, yeah, your face is cut up a little bit. You have an accident or a smash-up? Yeah, something like that. You, you want me to call a cop? No, no. I'll handle this myself. Yeah, but don't you think you ought to go home and get some rest? Uh, maybe you ought to find yourself a sawbone or something. Huh? Yes, sir. Maybe you ought to find yourself a doctor to kind of fix you up. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's a good boy. You take care of yourself, Jim. Again. Says doctor on the door, doesn't it? The office is still open, isn't it? Yes, but I thought Dr. Wade told you that he didn't want you here. I heard him, but this is different. If he doesn't see me now, I'll phone the state medical board and the lawyer and anybody else who's handy and make him a first-class Simon Legree for refusing me emergency treatment. Now, cut him out. Oh, you're hurt, Mr. Regan. Oh, please sit down. Sit down right here. Where's your doctor, lady? Oh, he isn't in here. He's already gone for the day. Let me see. What happened? You tell me, lady. I'm just a peaceful citizen looking for a doctor. Uh, uh, sit still. That's a nasty bruise on your forehead. Yeah. I got some better ones where a man tried to cave in all my ribs. Uh, hold still. Lift up your face to the light. Uh, uh, That's better. Oh. Tender? Uh huh. First the stairs, now this. You've had quite a day, Mr. Regan. Maybe you ought to quit. Uh, hold that right there. Mm -hmm. While I touch up this cut on your chin. Eef. There. Who'd you say you uh, worked for? International Detective Bureau. I'd resign if I were you. They're working you too hard. What's happened lately isn't exactly routine. What happened lately? Well, I found out that the man who died this morning had a chronic heart condition and he should have never been insured. Your doctor's in this up to his ears for passing him. Go on. A big man in a brown sport coat doesn't want anybody to look into anything. He's the one who did this. That's right. Hmm, that should hold you. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Where do you live? Huh? Your address. I'm coming over to your place tonight. You are? If what you say is true, my doctor's going to get 5 to 15 in San Quentin for doing a fix on an insurance examination, and I might be dragged into it. And I wouldn't want that to happen. So? So I'm digging up that file and bringing it over to your place, and we'll see what's what. Why not look at it right now? Isn't here. We just moved to this place three days ago, and half the stuff is still in the old office. All right. I'll buy that. Try 1720 North Taft, 308. In about two hours. Why so long? You need some rest. Besides, your shirt's bloody. Well, what was that name? John R. Renzo, R-E-N-Z-O. All right. You can expect me. Feel better now? Uh, yeah, much better. Oh. You know, you freeze me, lady. Your boss throws me out. You fix me up. You help me. 
Maybe I wouldn't have fallen down those stairs if you hadn't sent me out to eat alone. Call me Mary if you like. I thought it'd be something like that. Mine's Jeff. I've had a hard day, Mary. I know. But maybe it'll be a better day from now on, Jeff. You know, I had a feeling I was going to like you. It was just about then that I remembered the beneficiary. She was my last call. I bucked beach traffic out Wilshire and pulled up in front of the Beverly Hills address Lion had given me. A row of brass mailboxes on the outside of a four-unit court told me that Marie Rochelle Portier lived there. The man in overalls watering the lawn blinked at me, frowned at the cut on my chin, pointed to his own, and shook his head. I nodded back, wondering what Marie Rochelle Portier, or whoever she might be, whatever her racket might be, looked like. I found out. Yeah? It was the big man without his brown sport coat. This time it was swimming trunks, and he looked as big as the super cheap. I threw my whole arm into his face. He staggered backwards into the room, trying to get his balance. I let him have another one in the stomach. He was out of condition. One more, and his chin was cut. He went down, taking a lamp, a card table, and a glass of warm lemonade with him. Oh, yeah. It's real good to see you again, Pilgrim. All right, Seamus. All right, you're, you're the champ. Come on, get up, get up. I might have known I was going to find you here. Where's your girlfriend? No, no, no. Just a minute. I said, where is she? She ain't around. Ain't no one around but me. Honest. Okay, you give it to me. What are you talking about? Oh, you. I've met citizens like you before. Oh. Now, come on. Make it straight. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, you busted my head. I'll make it straight. Marie's my girlfriend. She calls me today, tells me what you look like. Tells me where you'll be. Tells me what to do. I do it. She knows who an insurance stick will go to. All right, go I on. Catch you at the boy. You're nosy. She says to rough you up a little bit, make you forget what you're doing for a while. I find you like she says and do what she says. And, uh, nothing personal in it. What about the doctor? He split with you and her? Ain't no doctor in on it. Just me and Marie. How'd she fix it for Renzo to get insured? I don't know. She's got connections. She gets around. All right, smart guy. Come on, spill. Honest, honest. That's it, Shamus. That's all. That's all there is to it. We worked it a couple of times before. I don't know how she fixes it, but she does. I do all the heavy work, and we get along fine. Now, and then somebody gets excited, and I have to cool him off for a time. But, but well, that's it. Straight. Honest. Hey, what are you doing? Shut up. Well, now, don't call the cops. Give me a break, will you? Will you shut up? Lance. It's me. Regan, where have you been? I'm calling from the address of Marie Rochelle Portier. I told you not... there's a big ape here who roughed me up today trying to put me out of commission. I don't care about that. We have only 12 hours. Come on out and pick him up and get a statement for a warrant. Warrant for who? For Marie Rochelle Portier. This monkey can give you enough to have her picked up. She's the one we want. You sure about that? I found out that the doctor who wouldn't let you into his office is in a lot of trouble. Got a wife suing him for divorce, and he might no, have no, been trying... No, no, it's the here, dame we want. As soon as you get a warrant on her, it'll make that insurance policy invalid. I still don't trust that doc. It's early yet. Why don't you oh. hop over? <laughs> you bringing the cops out here? Look, Seamus, I got a little dough, and it, it'd come to more than the ten a day in expenses you're getting if you well, want you. to... Now you. Stay here, Pilgrim. I'm tired. I'm going home. I've been waiting for you. Forget about me? No. The janitor let me in. I told him you were my brother. That's nice. You didn't come straight home and get some rest. Oh, I had a couple of things to do first. Well, sit down. I've fixed your drink. Good. Hot day and all. Thanks. Now, uh, tell me about your doctor. Huh? Hmm? Some things I know already. His wife's suing him for divorce, trying to get every penny he's got. He doesn't like me. That's it. Or... Maybe he just doesn't like any private detective or anybody else who might be working for his wife, huh? 
Maybe. Uh, and if I can spot a man who's being taken to the cleaners, he's one. He's pretty touchy these days about all the trouble she's probably caused him. What's this got to do with us? The stars are coming out. Uh, just straightening out. Well, if that's the way things are with him, then my job's finished. Good. Now we can relax. Mm -hmm. You've been working much too hard. Jeff, put your arms around me. Feel good. Good to have arms around you in a big city like this. Such a big city. So many people. Mm-hmm. You're nice, Jeff. Sometimes it's so lonely. And sometimes it's like this. Sure. Sure, Marie. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Marie Port here, Mary Porter, it's all the same to me. No, don't reach for it, lady. I took it out of your purse. You, you I know, I tricked you. I've been wanting to trick somebody ever since you shoved me down that flight of stairs this morning, ever since you shagged your big boyfriend on me. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. No, I'll not kill... today you won't. I'm not insured. All right, take it easy. Oh, let me go, Jeff. Let me go, please. You were so lonely in the big city that you just sat down and past time making out phony medical reports and counting the insurance checks that you collected on bad bets. Oh, please, Jeff, I... Oh, just let me go, please. So you have me thinking that a doctor's phony when the only thing that's bothering him is a wife and a divorce suit. Oh, Jeff, listen to and me. And when I start getting close, you try to scare me off. And when I get really close, you figure to drop over and put on a good act. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, listen to me. They'll send me to prison. They'll, they'll make me grow old and ugly there. Oh, Jeff, please, please let me go. I'll do anything. I, Jeff, you can let me go. You can, you can. You will. Oh, please, Ryan, Jeff. Please me again. Let me go. Got that warrant? Yeah, he oh, spilled. Please. Where are we going to find that dame? Please. She's probably skipped. Oh, no, Jeff. she's at my place. Oh, what? Do anything, Look, anything. Get somebody over quick, will you? Oh, please. Get him over while she's still here. Please. Well, I told it all to the lion and. He told it all to the American Insurance Company, and they renewed our contract. She's being arraigned next Monday. What happens after that is up to the jury. Melody had a question. Jeff, what do you think they'll do to her? Well, she'll get about ten years, I guess. If, um, if Mr. Lyon hadn't had that contract with AIC... Would you have turned her in? Sure, I'd have turned her in. It's my job, isn't it? Oh, it's a big city. A lot of lonesome people down there. They allowed her one call when they took her to jail. She called here asking for you. Jeff, why did she do that? I don't know, Melody. I don't know. The easiest way to save for the future is to buy United States savings bonds. Your nearest post office bank or savings and loan association can accommodate you. Or you can buy bonds on the payroll savings plan. Just ask your employer to start deducting for a bond a month. A bond a month is good security for the years to come. For money in the future, buy United States savings bonds now. You will be glad you did. Jack Webb is starred as Jeff Regan, with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. Eve McVeigh was heard as Mary Porter, and Ken Christie as the big man. It's CBS, same time next week, for hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, investigator, as he tells the story of the lady with the golden hair. Jeff Regan, investigator, is written by E. Jack Newman, produced and directed by Gordon T. Hughes, with original music by Del Castillo. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 